Okay, so if you're really familiar with Le Chatelier's principle, maybe all of the last videos we'll review for you. Um, probably this material is new. Um, most high schools don't teach the numerical part of equilibriums. As it turns out though, we can quantify how far a reaction is going to shift in each direction and we can predict concentrations before we do anything. And that's a really valuable thing to do because um, many times equilibriums work on a very, very big scale. The ocean being a classic example of a really big um, giant equilibrium reaction. And of course the human body too. I just showed you one of those examples with hemoglobin, but there are more, many, many more examples of equilibria in, in the body, in biology. Uh, it turns out it's unethical to experiment on people without knowing what's going to happen. So using actual calculations to make predictions about how um, our disturbances might affect our equilibria is an important thing to have. So these K's are capitalized and I want to emphasize this guys. It is not the same thing. So capital K is all about equilibriums. Little K is kinetics. We call that um, the rate constant, remember? Not the same thing. Uh, big K is called an equilibrium constant. So they're both constants. That's K always means constant, at least in chemistry. Okay. So in particular, our textbook uses KC to represent when we're using molarities. We talked um, in class about how in kinetics, the coefficients of a reaction really don't affect the rate. In equilibrium, the coefficients definitely affect the equilibrium constant. Okay, so this is where it comes into play. So, um, as it turns out, if we have this, equilibri uh, this equilibrium reaction right here, it's always every K, every equilibrium constant is always product concentrations, all of the products multiplied together, divided by the reactant concentration. So that's kind of a chant I have in my head when I'm doing equilibrium, it's products over reactants, always. So here, we have an equilibrium constant that's defined as C raised to the third power, that three comes from the coefficient and our reactant a raised to the second power, and B is, of course, raised to the one, which we don't usually write. That's an equilibrium constant completely different than the kinetics rate constant, which had nothing to do with the reaction coefficients. So this is where we're going to be using those coefficients. But it's always products over reactants. To give you a sense of scale for this, if we have a really big positive number, so let's say like this, really big. This is a ratio, by the way, so it has no units, unlike the Ks from the last um, chapter, which the units tell you whether it's first order, or second order, or whatever. Here, there are no units because all the molarities cancel. But if we have a really big value here, um, remember this is kind of like, you could even think of it as big number over one, that means we have a lot of products. Okay, lots and lots of products. If, on the other hand, we have, say, 10 to the negative 9, the negative exponent can confuse people. So I just want to remind you that that's the same thing as an inverting situation here. Whoops. So in this case, product is little, reactant is big. All right. So we would say, um, we would, we would have to say that the reactants are dominant if we have like a negative exponent. This is important because as it turns out, equilibrium constants can span a huge range all the way, you know, 10 to the 12, all the way down to 10 to the negative 12. It's crazy. So uh, understanding what those values mean is really important. It gives you a snapshot in to what chemicals are actually running around in the solution. Oh, hang on. There we go. So some of us are a more visual um, type of learner and 
this image from your textbook is a really, really good summary. If K is really big, so much bigger than one, we have a very small amount of reactants because they're on the bottom and a very large amount of products. If on the other hand, K is way smaller than one, so 10 to the negative nine is an example of that. It means you got mostly reactants and very little product. So here's an example problem. We want to calculate, by the way, KC and KEQ mean the same thing, just to clarify. Um, this is equilibrium constant. This is more common in other textbooks. I think ours uses this instead, but they mean the same thing. It's just everything in molarities, which these already are. You can imagine there might be a situation where chapter 13 comes back into play here, like they give us a percent by volume and we've got to convert it into molarities. So that might happen. Um, but first, the very first step is always to define the K with no numbers. This is true all the time. Don't skip this step because that's when people forget to use the exponent. So here, I'm just going to check, make sure the balance is five chlorines, one. Okay, so it's balanced. That means I can just plug in our concentrations. There's no coefficients in this example. Don't assume that, like, ever. Make sure you check. So this would be our definition for um, the equilibrium constant. Then we just plug stuff in, right? So PCL5 goes on the bottom. Um, you know, it's all right in this case um, for KEQs if you guys just want to leave off the units because, again, it's a ratio. Everything's going to, everything is going to cancel anyway, so we can just leave them off. PCL3 goes on the top, and so does the chlorine, right? And so if this, it says it's at equilibrium at this point, it's implied because we get a KEQ that we're calculating. So all you got to do is just plug them into the right spot, making sure that you make that definition of where everything goes before you put numbers in. So our answer is 32 and two thirds. So I'm just going to, we only have two, well, really one zig fig, but I'll just keep, I'll just keep those two zig figs. Um, we should have measured this one more carefully. <laughs> so uh, a KEQ of 33 is quite a bit bigger than one, which means we have more products than we have reactants, just like we saw on the last slide. 